All right, so thank you, Roman, for the introduction. And, and thanks to everyone. Um, so I'm Vasilis of Rags. I'm with uh, the University of Cyprus in Israel. So in the next uh, 15 minutes, I'm going to talk to you about our modeling efforts, multi-scale modeling efforts using finite elements and agent-based modeling in cancer. Now, uh, before I kind of uh, dive in, let's say, uh, into um, um, the exciting stuff, which is uh, modeling. Um, uh, uh, just confirm, uh, Roman uh, and everyone, uh, can you see the, the slide or can you see the notes as well? I can only see the slides, no notes. No. Super, okay, so. All right, so uh, let me very briefly uh, say a few things about uh, cancer. So in Aplasia involves the coexistence and co-evolution, so co-evolution of cancer cells together with the exocellular matrix, vascular and epithelial cells, interactions of stroma and immune cells. However, the greatest challenge uh, for cancer biologists is that the tumor is heterogeneous. So it's not the same to all people, to all patients, and, uh, and, the, and there are variations in terms of structural morphology in the extracellular matrix, like the stroma the cancer associated cells have significant plasticity, they diverge, regards to activation status, localization, etc. The collagen microstructure in the matrix is heterogeneous. There are biochemical cues like growth factors, enzymes, cytokines, and immune cell interactions that play a key role in the response of the, of the host tissue. Uh, the vascular network um, is, uh, is peculiar, is abnormal, it differs with regards to the tissue origin, maturity, etc. So let me uh, put my uh, spotlight on the vascular network. And that's because uh, the, vas the vascular is the main, let's say, avenue for drug delivery and also for tissue perfusion. So in the tumor, um, the vascular is incomplete in terms of its basement membrane. So there is a normal uh, pericyte protein, no massive cells. There is a defective endothelial cell uh, monolayer, monolayer, as you can see here, this normal uh, uh, blood vessel wall is an abnormal, it's leaky. And that plays a major role in terms of how perfusion is, uh, is, is support into the host tissue and the tumor tissue. The, the blood vessels are non-hierarchical, they are abnormal, as you can see by on this comparison image. Uh, at the bottom. And the most major uh, uh, signature of the tumor um, uh, vascular to heterogeneity is that the uh, tumor perfusion is compromised. So the blood flow is sluggish, uh, the vessels are compressed, as you can see here in this uh, histological image, or they're even collapsed, as you can see at that image, which impacts in terms of the oxygenation of the tissue, the, the tumor. And this drives acidosis, metastasis, and also imposes a resistance towards uh, against radiotherapy. Um, so, uh, going into modeling, um, probably most people, when they hear about models, they come to their mind about computer models or mathematical models. But in vitro and in vitro global models are uh, extensively used, substantially used as reductionist approaches in uh, cancer biology in order to understand a pathophysiology of. Neoplasia. However, in the last two decades, uh, in silico, that is to say mathematical and computational modeling, uh, are used to understand the tumor host microenvironment heterogeneity. Um, in silico is used to understand more about the role of the mechanical force than in terms of cells, mechanical transduction, geogenesis, lithogeogenesis, tumor perfusion. And of course, uh, our goal is to aggregate in silico together with information from the in vitro and in vivo and medical imaging towards testing new hypotheses, proposed novel designs and experiments. And of course, the holy grail of most in silico modelers is to develop those models towards translation in order to improve patient diagnosis, certification, and, uh, uh, and response to treatment. Now, um, in the following slides, I will present, let's say, two general classes of in silico models we are developing in this direction. So the first one is agent-based modeling, uh, procedures to simulate in vitro models, um, uh, that is to say, in, labor in the laboratory setting, as well as find the procedures to simulate in vivo animal models or human organ scale models. 
uh, that extend across several scales. So uh, in terms of uh, length scales, we are modeling over here. So from tissue organ level scale to down to cell level by scale, which is by dynamos, let's say, in each. Uh, let me uh, go on the first uh, four slides by showing you some examples involved in artificial cancer mass um, uh, simulations, genoids, cell invasion, and metastasis, as well as uh, cell drug interaction and toxicity. So you see here uh, on this first one uh, a demo of the development of an artificial cancer mass in vivo. In vitro, excuse me. So these are different, let's say, uh, instances of the same simulation using biodynamo. And you see here the necrotic core that qualitatively uh, at least very, very well with in vitro findings over here. Um, next up uh, is, uh, is another demo of agent-based modeling uh, using uh, biodynamo. Uh, this is uh, the work uh, done together with the, within the biodynamo consortium. It's been already shown by uh, Lucas and it's been published at by informatics uh, journal. Um, over here, we simply uh, simulate the, uh, the, the development of, of, um, of a specific cancer cell line as obtained from the from published literature. And we effectively uh, simulate the outgrowth of this cancer mass. And here you see the comparison of the in silico against the in vitro results. Now, uh, on this uh, third slide, uh, this is work in progress. Uh, this demo uh, shows showcases a scratch assay experiment simulation. So uh, on the left, we have in silico animations, uh, and on the right, we have in vitro, corresponding in vitro images of a wound healing assay experiment in a 2D culture of glioma cells. Uh, so the A1, A172 is a very invasive uh, glioma. Phenotype. So uh, the surface is scratched, and then we investigate, and then we monitor the invasiveness of the cells. So you see here the comparison of those two simulations where uh, this particular cell line um, is uh, considered by uh, accounting for different compression conditions. So uh, we model for cell like mitosis, apoptosis, migration, due to haptotaxis, chemotaxis, cell mechanical transduction, and also distribution of uh, cytokines by those cells. Uh, like I said, this is a work in progress, and this is another uh, brand new work uh, from Dr. Gazelli and colleagues at UCY. Uh, so over here, we investigate the effect of cold atmospheric plasma, and its effect uh, or without or with uh, the combined use of uh, toxorubicin, which is a cytotoxic agent against uh, cancer cells. So uh, we model here a monoculture of cancer cells incubated in this uh, entity assay. Um, and uh, we employed uh, experimental data from this uh, very recently published data, scientific reports from our colleagues at the University of Padras. And we simulated um, uh, over here in silico, uh, the development of that particular cancer cell line during incubation, following the exposure of those cells to call atmospheric plasma uh, for 15 and 20, uh, 120 uh, seconds. Uh, so in principle, as you can see here at the top row in illustration, it is the experimental setup. And this is what we uh, carry out in silico. Um, um, so this is the monolayer uh, of, uh, of that particular uh, cell culture uh, the con under the control conditions. And this is uh, because of the effect of combined uh, doxorubicin and color atmospheric plasma. Um, and the motivation here is to, uh, to simulate uh, the effect of doxorubicin and doxorubicin cap in terms of mitosis and apoptosis respectively, and use the in silico in order to quantify the effect of, uh, of, uh, of those treatment strategies in terms of uh, the, let's say, probabilities for those cells to die or even divide. And uh, at the bottom row, uh, this is the, new, the direction we are now taking in, which is simulate the jet of uh, color atmospheric plasma on solid humus by combining uh, uh, multi, so multi physics simulator uh, such as COMSOL to estimate the active oxygen species concentrations and our final uh, software uh, that 
uh, a compass to solve tumor growth development. Um, then um, another multi-scale uh, cancer multi-scale example is, is this one. Uh, so we demonstrate um, uh, in this uh, slide um, our in silico efforts in bridging the macro tissue scale, the meso exosomatic scale, and the micro scale, the collagen fibers uh, micro biomechanics. Uh, so, so this uh, is this relatively old work, uh, and uh, I'm just showcasing you uh, in effect of of how we managed to. Uh, uh, to investigate in silico the relationship between the tumor growth uh, with the exosomatic collagen microstructure at the peritumal stroma. And our goal here was to uh, simulate and replicate the in vivo observations of the tumor associated uh, collagen uh, similar to one and two proposed by Provenzano and colleagues a while ago uh, by considering only mechanical interactions. And the major finding is that we uh, managed to, to to recapitulate the in vivo experiment, the in vivo uh, data. So these are uh, in vivo data. And we uh, observed that the tumor reorganizes the collagen passively at the peritumal stroma, which reinforces the argument that the, that the peritumal stroma stresses are circumferential. Then subsequently, we enhance the model by counting in uh, a microfluid flow of the testicium and the effect of the collagen microstructure in estimating uh, the permeability at the exocellular matrix. And these are the major findings, which is that there is a strong correlation between the solid stress and permeability, permeability in terms of the intensity velocity. And also the, it's just, the stresses play a major role in terms of the configuration permeability, and thus, in effect, imposes a drug delivery bar at the tumor host interface. Uh, next up is a substantial enhancement to the previous uh, uh, model. Uh, here we uh, we developed uh, an, a fundamental uh, framework that encompasses the tumor host biomechanics, uh, the balance of chemical cues, cytokines, growth factors, enzymes, and so on, as well as angiogenesis, interstitial, and vascular biofluid flow mechanics. So this is just a, a, an illustration of uh, of the comparison between uh, in vivo uh, uh, experiment. Uh, uh, on a mom, on a, using a mouse uh, model. Um, and this is in silico. You see here the absence of vessels at the, at the tumor core. And then on the next uh, slide, I'm just showing you an enhanced, let's say, the next step that we took up, which is to include the, uh, the delivery of drugs from chemotherapeutic agents to liposomes and drug borne nanoparticles. But since I'm running out of time, uh, probably I'll skip explaining more about those slides. and focus on this uh, very nice uh, demo, which is uh, uh, simulation uh, uh, using the previous framework uh, that accounts for tumor growth, uh, tumor host tissue biomechanics, drug delivery, uh, uh, biofluid flow in the, in the blood vessels, the extracellular magic space, um, and so on. Uh, so here we, compa we compare two uh, cases where uh, colorectal cancer, cancer uh, was implanted in the mammary fat part of this uh, uh, pure, um, uh, poor little mouse. And uh, the, our colleagues from uh, UCL, the Center for Advanced Biomedical Imaging, uh, they, they, monitor, they monitor the, uh, the vascular uh, light and also they, they monitor the, the growing tumor. And over here, we simulate the effect of the drugs in terms of how these, these are distributed with respect to uh, the vascular network and so on. Uh, so on the left, it could be, we have the administration of a chemotherapeutic origin, the tyrosine, and on the right hand side, we have the, the administration of a liposome, the fiber view. And uh, going to this conclusion, um, so the, in the next uh, four slides, I'm going to show you uh, our uh, very recently published joint effort with uh, Jean de Mondini, Roman, Lucas, and our colleagues. Um, uh, here we develop a coupled fine element agent based modeling framework. So we are breaking those two, let's say, uh, tools together, uh, specifically as far as the modeling agent based modeling concerns, we use, of course, PyDynamo, uh, whereas for the fine element, we use our in house code. So this one, uh, so this framework uh, was used in modeling and simulating in situ avascular development.
So the mechanisms of the compass was tumor growth, the balance of those biochemical tools, and cell mechanics. So let me go on this very nice and exciting illustration. So uh, instead of running the entire, let's say, uh, eight cubic centimeters domain using dynamos, we kind of split up the job and run, let's say, uh, several thousands of biodynamo instances at predefined, let's say, uh, locations in space. Uh, so you see from top to clockwise, from top to uh, to right, um, and let's say zoom ins, uh, where those, those, let's say, steroids are agents, in this case, cells, uh, different colors denote different phenotypes. And you see here the tumor outline, how it grows over a period of several days. And this is uh, this contour uh, denotes the oxygen deficiency. So this is a small, let's say, tissue sample, but our work is uh, currently in upscaling this uh, technology. Uh, so from a small, let's say, cubic domain into the full organ scale. So um, uh, through this uh, research funded project uh, from the Cyprus Cancer Research Institute, uh, we aim to do exactly that, in, uh, which means to investigate in silico uh, by predicting uh, in tumor in stage two brain cancer patients in Cyprus, very strong treatment uh, using stereotactic radiotherapy combined with chemo. And of course, using uh, pertinent clinical data such as MRI scans to fit and validate models. So these are, let's say, some. Uh, let me probably fast forward up because I'm running out of time. Uh, these are just, let's say, preliminary uh, results showing, let's say, the formation of the uh, proliferative layer blastoma. This is the necrotic core, and this is uh, uh, these are contours of the hypervascularized uh, periphery of the tumor, and this is the, necrot the necrosis. Um, and uh, with these next two slides, I'm just going to going to showcase that we are developing, uh, let's say, frameworks using finite elements and also genetic analytics methods, as well as agent-based modeling methods, uh, which are based using biodynamo. And we are coupling those uh, two, uh, let's say, work together, work together in order to uh, bring some more exciting stuff. And I'm concluding this slide by acknowledging funding agencies, bodies, and of course, uh, our universities and many, many colleagues from Cyprus, Sare, Champoli Moore, Fourth, UCL, CIK, Western State Kings, Newcastle, and Takujavat. So, uh, thank you very much for your attention and I'm very happy to take up any questions. Thank you, Vasilis. Yeah, very interesting and uh, really impressive how many different kind of lines of uh, methods uh, and techniques one can use in order to address uh, those cancer-related research questions. So we have, uh, uh, we are again a bit, uh, the time is, is running. So um, I, I think we have one time for one question. I'm sorry if I cannot uh, see all of them now, but the first question that I see, I will pick. So yeah, please raise your hand or type in the chat if you have a question. And we can ask Vasilis. Any questions? If not, then I will ask one question. Was uh, so the uh, one nice thing about agent-based modeling is, of course, that you can use you can create multi-scale models, and so you can take into account various different kinds of experimental data in order to to uh, see can your model reproduce those can you maybe briefly describe what are the um data types that you have used so far or and, or is there a data type that is very difficult to kind of computation model or do you think uh, you can you could in, in principle also use other types of data it depends on the problem uh, concern so for the in vitro work uh, i was pretty much uh, uh, microscopy images uh, using staining, for example. Um, um, it could be uh, uh, metabolic, uh, let's say, data, so biomarkers that indicate uh, cell activity. 
Um, as far as the 3D models, um, like the in vivo tumor, tumor growth, growth experiments, um, well, the list was more elaborate. Uh, and it involved uh, both in vitro uh, and in vivo. Um, uh, so, okay. for example, in the brain project example, uh, for example, we are going to use a, a MAR T1 T2 scans, diffusion test or images, um, uh, of course, uh, using gadolinium. Uh, so, stuff like okay. that. So, the sky is the limit, in other words, right? Yeah. Good. All right. Thank you, Vasilis.